Okay, we're going to do an experiment called cracking. Now, in this experiment, we take a long alkane molecule, such as paraffin, and we react it using this sort of apparatus here. And during the experiment, the long alkane molecule is going to be broken up into smaller molecules, two different sorts of smaller molecules. And we'll be collecting one of them in the test tube at the end of the apparatus, and we can test that later to find out what kind of a molecule it is. This is the apparatus that we're going to be using for the experiment. I've got some mineral wool here at the end of my boiling tube and I've soaked it with paraffin, so that's my long alkane molecule. In here, I've got a catalyst. Now the catalyst can be one of many things, but what's important with the catalyst is that it has to have a zeolite structure. Now by that, I mean it has to have a structure that's got a sort of microscopic honeycomb type structure to it. And the substance that I've got in there right now is pumice. I could also have used terracotta, like you make plant pots out of, or ceramic, bits of broken up ceramic, or if you want a proper chemical name to put in there, I could use aluminium oxide, which is also known as alumina, or silicon dioxide, which is also known as silica. Any of those things will work because they've all got this zeolite structure. Now the idea with this is that I heat the catalyst until the catalyst is very hot and then when I think the catalyst is hot enough I'll flip my Bunsen flame over to the paraffin so that the paraffin vaporises and hot paraffin passes over the hot catalyst. The cracking reaction should then occur and I'll end up with a smaller molecule moving along this delivery tube and down and out of the end here in the water bath. I've got some test tubes ready full of water that I'll be able to put over the end of my tube there in order to collect any gas that comes out of there. Okay, so I'm going to try heating this now and we'll see how we go. The first job is to heat the catalyst. Now as I heat the catalyst, you'll be able to see there's some bubbles coming out of the end of the tube. Now those bubbles are just air that's expanded from the, um, from the apparatus as I've been heating it. So I don't want to collect those just yet. I'm just going to heat and heat the, the catalyst for a little while until I think it's nice and hot. And now I'm going to start flicking my Bunsen onto the paraffin and I'm going to start collecting the bubbles in my test tube. Okay, I've almost collected one tube of gas now. And this is where it gets tricky because I've got to try to keep heating this tube while putting a bung in my test tube. So let's see how we go. That one's been done successfully. Let's see how many more tubes of gas I can collect. I might join you again in a minute. Okay, so I've finished the experiment now and you can see that I've lifted the apparatus out of the water and I've done this very deliberately because I don't know if you can see the sort of close up on here. This has got a funny little um, gadget on the end of the tube. It's called a bleed valve and it's got a little slit in the rubber so I can open it like this. It looks a bit like a gapy mouth. And the idea of this is it's supposed to allow the bubbles of gas to come out but not allow any water to go back in. Um, except that they don't work very well and water does always sneak back in. Now this is a real problem because at the end of the experiment when you stop heating, obviously all the um, gas that's inside the apparatus starts to cool and contract, which means it's more likely to suck water into the system, which then means the water can get sucked all the way back up the tube and we can end up with cold water getting into this very hot tube, which potentially means either the tube will crack and fall onto the bench with all sort of hot 
um, chemicals inside it. Or worse, sometimes what happens is when the water gets into the tube, it boils very quickly and shoots the bung out of the end and sprays hot pumice out of the end of the tube as well, neither of which is the situation I really want. So as I got to the end of the experiment, I carried on heating and I lifted the whole apparatus up by the clamp stand and lifted it right out of the water so that as it cooled, it was in the air and I didn't need to worry about that. Okay, if we have a look now in the water bath, you can see there's some oily residue over the surface of the water bath, which doesn't look very nice. But I've also managed to collect three tubes of gas here. So what I'm going to do is to test those using some bromine water. I might only need to test one. Um, I'm going to test them using some bromine water and see if I can um, demonstrate that it's not an alkane in that tube. Now you'll remember from experiments that we did before that when you put bromine water with alkanes they tend not to do anything unless you've had a lot of UV light go on them. Well it's evening now and I'm in a lab with the blinds down and it's dark outside there's no UV light around so I would expect if this were an alkane that my bromine is just going to sit there and not be decolorized. So let's test it and see what happens. A little bit of bromine water in there. Okay, and then I give it a good shake up so the gas gets a chance to react with the bromine. And I hope you can see that that orange colour of the bromine has completely gone, which means it's not behaved as an alkane at all. It's something different in there. I'm going to try now igniting... Um, igniting one of the tubes, let's go with that one that's got the least amount of water in it, and see if it appears that the gas that I've made will burn. Okay, so I bring my splint there. There was a, I don't know if you saw that, there was a tiny little burst of flame, um, and a teeny little flame emerged very slightly from the top of the tube. So I hope that's convincing proof that the oven doesn't want to stay in. Um, I hope that's convincing proof that the gas that I've made is also flammable. And I think I'll stop there. I don't think there's any point in doing anything with that third tube.